Thanks for coming back for another movie review. Uh, today I wanted to talk about Napoleon, the new Ridley Scott movie, which I am super stoked he made it at age 86 or whatever he is. Um, Sir Ridley cranking out solid movies well into his 80s is just insane. A lot, obviously Scorsese is too, but just two legends making fine, fine work. Uh, specifically Sir Ridley, this one and his last movie, Last Duel, um, a movie I saw in theaters and originally was lukewarm on. I actually went back and, and have already rewatched it a couple times, which I would not have thought the first time I saw it in theaters that I would be going back and seeking to rewatch The Last Duel. Um, but I have. And I think what I like so much about that movie, among many other things, I'm huge on atmosphere, I'm huge on writing characters that feel real, but the structure of it feels uh, enticing. And uh, the three act structure, something uh, like one of my very favorite movies of all time, Steve Jobs has that same structure. And I keep something that entices me and, and, and brings me in about that. Um, but that's a good segue to this movie and the structure of Ridley Scott's Napoleon, which I actually didn't think was that uh, cunning of a device. Like he, he basically does the, um, uh, a little, uh, not the full cradle to grave obviously, but we get some of the early life that I'm not sure really adds that much to what Ridley Scott wanted to say about Napoleon, at least in the theatrical version. Now take, put that asterisk by what I'm about to say, because I understand that there is a director's cut that will be coming out and will likely answer a lot of the quarrels I have um, with this movie. But I think a theatrical version should still be able to stand on its own. Um, so that's what I'm mostly gonna talk about. So the structure, I think he bit off a little too much of the story of Napoleon and didn't say anything with what he bit off that was it more than just like a pretty depiction of what you would read in Wikipedia or a pretty depiction of, uh, of a history, an entry level history course on this. Um, where I feel like the movie starts to take off is once Napoleon is already kind of the general that, that he, is, is, is destined to become. Um, Joaquin Phoenix plays the, plays the successful general to the grave very well. The early stuff feels like a 50 something year old man playing a, 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 a teen or a 20 year old. It doesn't, I, it, it, it didn't take me out of it so much it did get me thinking about man it was was Joaquin the best choice for this <laughs> like um and I didn't I'm, I can't say that I really saw the moment where I was like okay that's why Joaquin is doing he I thought he was good I liked Joaquin I especially liked Joaquin successful general on early Napoleon I did, I had some some time to think about man that this maybe could have been better cast here. Um so the structure maybe if Ridley had taken like Austerlitz started with Austerlitz. We come in on the battle of Austerlitz. The first thing we see is this Napoleon that we all know, the great general uh one step ahead, surprising the opposition. Um and we see that, we see this incredible depiction of, of battle. The Austerlitz battle is the first major set piece where I, I was just like, wow. And at the Austerlitz battle, Napoleon is also sending a lot of letters back and forth to Josephine. So I think if we open with the battle, we get the letters going back and forth. We hear of this great love. We hear of his passion for his wife. Um, we, we get the, um, letters read out loud by the actors. So we hear Vanessa Kirby's voice. We're intrigued by what is this relationship going to look like? 
and then he comes back from Austerlitz, and then we meet Josephine. I think maybe that would have been a better introduction to the character. And then we do Austerlitz all the way through either Elba, his death on Elba, or um, through the end of Waterloo. And I, I know Waterloo's been done. I get that there's the Sergei Bondarchuk movie. Um, but that specific cut, I don't think has been done from Austerlitz through Waterloo or Austerlitz through Elba. Um, so maybe smaller chunk would have given us better entry into the character of Napoleon instead of broader chunk where we're just hearing the same stuff kind of rehashed. Um, I also wanted to say that, <clears throat> excuse me. So the highlights of the movie for me were Vanessa Kirby and the Battle of Austerlitz and older Napoleon. All of those were, I think, five out of five. Great stuff. The, the reunion scene, when Napoleon comes back from St. Helens, St. Helena, I'm spacing now. Uh, when Napoleon comes back, the reunion scene with his army, with his soldiers, it felt kind of unearned. It felt kind of speedy. Um, they were all kind of like not that stoked. They were or maybe like just not ready to be won over. And then all of a sudden one guy starts chanting, long live the emperor. And then everybody starts chanting it. And it's a huge reunion. And that whole scene is like two and a half minutes. It's like, it just, it, it felt like it was of another movie. Maybe that other movie is the extended version. But if they wanted that reunion scene to feel like a good payoff, they could have, they, they, they would have shown more interactions with Napoleon and soldiers. I know the march to Russia, he's handing out bread. Great. They win the battles. Sure, that wins in positive favor. Small inter interactions where he's showing kindness or decency or leadership or stuff. Character moments with his soldiers, I think, would have made that reunion better. Um, it didn't make sense to me the way that it happened. I would have liked more of scenes like the bread that he was handing out, which was like a seven second scene. Um, I think that highlighting the exiles, if he, if the movie would have been focused in that smaller chunk, if he would have high, if Ridley Scott would have highlighted the exiles, St. Helena and then Elba and use that to punctuate the, uh, more intense epic sequences um th there's some really beautiful moments of repose and respite that napoleon has in his life that i feel like are very filmic things and lingering a little more on saint helena whenever he's just pining to get back he's he is yearning to you know he he could push his breakfast plate off the table he you know, maybe find some small fight to pick on the island. Something that builds us back up to him coming back instead of just like a faraway shot of Napoleon kind of swinging his legs on a cliffside on the island of St. Helena, which I feel like didn't punctuate the the distance that he had from France. It didn't, I didn't feel that. I, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't rooting for him to get back yet because we were barely there. Um, which also would have made the reunion better. Um, okay. Next thing, Napoleon's interaction with Wellesley or, um, Wells, uh, the Wellington, Duke of Wellington. I, I'm not hundred percent sure what Ridley Scott was going for with that last scene, which is totally fictitious, not real, not, um, not a true event, but Napoleon's eating, he, the battle's over. Napoleon is oddly like gregarious and engaging and and obviously he's kind of like holding court with these young Navy men, British Navy men. He's a little too chipper for a guy who just lost everything and lost the love of his life. Uh, and what, what, like, and then he, he compliments Wellesley. He compliments Wellington on 
un that does that didn't feel like Napoleon to me. I feel like Napoleon would have, um, whatever he had to say to to Wellington, I feel like it would have been through gritted teeth. Same thing with to those Navy officers. I think he was too much of a competitor. He had that dog in him. I don't think it would have gone down like that. Um, <laughs> I had a couple of fan cast ideas of who I thought would have been intriguing Napoleons. Um, Adam Negatis, who was in uh, The Terror, He's, uh, I thought has a lot of energy and, and feistiness and, 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 and subtle um, ferocity. Um, Sebastian Stan was another person I thought of. Maybe he's a little too pretty for Napoleon. I don't know, but I thought he's a little closer to kind of that age that you would want for an actor to be, to be able to play like young artillery officer and then age him up instead of aging the Joaquin Phoenix down 35 years. I don't know. Um, basically maybe all this stuff will be answered <clears throat> and context will be given to it in the extended version that's um, forthcoming. Uh, I hope, what I hope is in that extended version is more moments of, more character moments of Napoleon, more engagement with his troops, and, uh, I think that's the, probably the main things. And if we get more of that, I, th this movie I have right now at a three and a half out of five on Letterboxd, I think it could get to a four, m maybe higher, if that extended cut, if that director's cut really has some meat and potatoes in there. So I'm excited to see it. I just wanted to make this video because I have so many thoughts on Napoleon. Um, check out my letterbox if you want to see my other reviews. It's letterbox.com um, slash retro motel. It's the same as my Instagram, retro motel, one word. Uh, awesome. Thanks for listening to the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. See you in the next one.